So what I had just done was play with the cast shadow underneath my creature. So if I turn it to normal mode, you can see that shadow. And if I turn it on and off, it's my gray overlay layer. You can see what a difference that makes in the lighting underneath. Bless you. And if I mess something up, because burning is, is kind of equally offensive to everything, I can always just take my eraser, soft-edged eraser, I'll do it at a slightly lower opacity here, and I can erase away from that overlay layer's effect to get the highlight back on this twig. Go at a bigger opacity and I'm bigger than two pixels. Like that. All right. Now, if I wanted to soften it a little bit, I can go to a lower opacity and just individual. Uh, no, I want those dark. Let's see. But individually kind of lighten it up in some places, but actually I mostly like it dark. I'm just gonna break it up a little bit so it feels more natural. Okay, that shadow underneath. So what does my non-destructive overlay layer look if I set it to normal mode? It's pretty basic. Some highlights on the tree trunk, shadow underneath my creature. I think that's probably all I need for the setting. Okay, now I'm gonna set that to overlay. I'm gonna show you how you can do the same thing to your creature. So I am going to first <coughs> click on my creature layer. And then I'm gonna use my magic wand. This all depends on you cutting out your creature cleanly. And I'm gonna take the feather off on my magic wand. So I have a two pixel feather on it. I set it to zero because I want to select with contiguous turned off all of the empty space around my creature. And the reason I turn contiguous off is in case I have a little gap in my creature, like there's a little hair that's flipped over and there's a little empty space between that loop of hair or horns or something like that. Now I'm going to say select the inverse the opposite of that selection. And it makes a cookie cutter selection exactly pixel for pixel on my creature. Now I make a new layer on top of my creature and my selection moves with me to that new layer. I'm gonna call this my creature non-destructive overlay layer and I'm gonna mark it gray by right clicking, go into the color options, choosing gray. And now I'm gonna say edit fill, just within the cookie cutter of my creature, gray normal 100%. And then I hit command D to deselect. Okay, so my creature's underneath this gray layer. So I set this overlay layer to overlay and it makes no difference at all. But when I dodge and burn it, now it will only fit on the edges of my creature. So, what do I need to dodge and burn? I'll make this full screen for a minute. First, I am going to dodge. I'm going to get this moonlight to hit my creature. And now when I dodge the ears, notice it doesn't affect the background at all. It's non-destructive. I'm not hurting the original pixels of my creature at all, but I'm showing this moonlight glowing through these semi-translucent ears. And on the back, brightening up the mid-tones. And very often we overdo these tools, the dodge and burn tools. So the non-destructive overlay layer helps us to be a little bit more measured in how we use them. 
I'm also going to dodge the feet a little bit so they show up, even though they're in shadow, just a little bit on the ground. All right, did that make any difference? Well, let's turn off my non-destructive layer. And you can see all those lights that I added. If I turn it to normal mode, it looks like this. Make sense? Because the moonlight's hitting it, right? And maybe I want to have it hit it a little bit from this side as well, especially on the bottom, because that's what some of these tree roots are showing. This is called rim light. Okay, now I set it to overlay. But I overdid it. It's a little too bright. So what can I do? I can always take the opacity on that overlay layer down. And I can also erase away from it. And find the right level. Then I can also burn on my creature. On this same overlay. And I'm only doing midtones, right? Because it's gray. So I can deepen the shadows in the core of my creature because that's where the light isn't hitting. And anywhere it got a little too bright, I can burn those back down a little bit. So what does that look like? If I set it to normal mode, now I have things that are darker than 50% gray and things that are brighter than 50% gray. Get the inside of the ears. And all of those will affect the layers underneath. So it was like this. Now it's like this. And it kind of fits with the contrast of the rest of the landscape. Okay, I think I will dodge just a little bit in the cheek here, brighten up some of those whiskers. But because it's on a gray overlay layer, the most you can do is make it white. So I can just keep doing this at 18%, and it's pretty safe to do, but the most it can do is go to white, and then that's not going to be as destructive as if I tried to actually burn my creature layer. So if I actually use dodge on my creature layer, it's far uh, quicker, but it means I can make mistakes. So if you need to, then you can go right to your creature, which is a copy. And you can do your final like highlights if your overlay wasn't strong enough. And that will only affect your creature as well, like the back of the ear, the back of the head. And this is for more extreme lighting conditions, which are fun to play with. Okay, so we've learned how to do two different non-destructive dodging and burning layers to match the direction of light. Now I'm going to play with the, the set, and now we're doing the dress rehearsal. So I've got my, my guy, my guy's in makeup, fully shaded. I've got my background, my background's fully painted. Now I'm going to add my props. So my props are these foreground layers. But I can arrange them. And I can see which ones are helpful and which ones aren't. Right. So first, this big potted plant, option command T. I'm going to change its placement a little bit. I still wanted to overlap my creature, but I don't need to overlap all of it, right? And maybe I even distort it a little bit. And 
and maybe I play with its adjustments so it's not quite as extreme in its color balance. And I knock back some of those greens in the shadows. Some of those yellows in the midtones. And in the highlights, put some of it back. And then I'm going to go to hue saturation, and I'm just going to desaturate it a little bit because it is a night scene. And that's starting to fit a little bit better. And then I can use my lasso with a three pixel feather, select all the space around it, not with my lasso, I'm sorry, with my magic wand. And then delete, delete, delete. And that will help bite away at this edge. And blend it. And if I need to, I can go in with my lasso with a two pixel feather. And trim anything. And delete, delete, delete. Get a better overlap. So you have full control of every pixel on every layer. That is what compositing gives you. Okay, so now that prop is set. What's next? Well, maybe this prop. These blue crystals are kind of cool. Yeah, I, have, I haven't even thought about like how to integrate all of this. But yeah, there's the crystals there. And then there's this rock here. And let's play with the rock a little bit. Maybe I want it over there and I want it behind the crystals. Yeah. Rock is a tough element to use, actually. I'm going to flip it. Yeah, it does kind of echo that. And I'm just going to push it here, <coughs> drop it behind. Yeah, that works. And then I'm going to duplicate it and then have it be here as well. Let's change it a little bit. Let's flip it. So remember, you have all these assets, and you can use them as in the ways you think work the best. Then I'm going to stretch it. All right, so I think that's working better. And now I'm noticing that my, my crystal prop, because it was late in doing my landscape and it was getting close to the deadline, I can cut that out better. And I'm going to, just really quickly. I'm going to clean up this kind of bluish pall it has. Cut out its edge. just like I trimmed my creature. Maybe I don't want this. That's looking better. Maybe I don't want some of this organic edge. I want these rocks to kind of fill in like a seam on the crystal. Little crystal deposits. Yeah. And I can use that as a mask and then just erase and kind of.